one of the great post-skim decisors of law in the last generation was Rav Henkin. Mukubal recognized around the world, initially in Europe, then in the United States. He wrote an essay The essay was written uh, roughly 80 years ago on why there seems to be a lack of emphasis on the learning of Nach, prophet, in the curriculum of the yeshiva world, obviously. Nach, Teyu Nevi'im Ksuvim, Tnevua, and we understand the sanctity of it, and we relate to it as such, as something that has Kedusha, Be'etzim, and is there to instruct generations, not just the generation to whom the Novi spoke. But, the but is, Emphasis, number one. Number two is that for the Torah Jew, we cannot approach Nach without the perspective, the eyes of Chazal. We have to be immersed in this view of the world, this view of history, this view of creation, where it all began, what has transpired, and where is it going. That only happens when we become immersed in Chazal. What we're doing here in this room, Shnayim Oichsim Batalis seem to be rather on the surface mundane issues, but the genius of the Jew since Maimur Hal Sinai has been to squeeze the sanctity and the eternity out of pits and plows, pots and pans. Everything that is, is an expression and a medium for accessing the sanctity of the essential mission of man. And in the learning, putting an emphasis on Nach, which Achenu Bnei Yisrael the secular Jewish world for a time has done here in El Tisal leads to a different self-image because they are not approaching it through the eyes of Chazal. They decidedly reject, ignore that perspective. That's the Galut Jew. And the Galut Jew was, was an image that the secular vision of coming back to Zion found intolerable. There was an allergy to the ghetto Jew and the image of the ghetto Jew. There were two, I'm proceeding, we'll come back to it later, in Yitz Hashem, either today or some other time. The 
Chinuch says in the mitzvah of the prohibition to chop down a fruit-bearing tree during a war, clearly pikuch nefesh, if it's a question of saving a life, everything is nitchek other than the three cardinal of Eris. Everything gets moved aside. But if you have an option, even if there's a certain amount of stress and duress, you don't chop down a fruit-bearing tree to use as a battering ram. And that, there's a discussion in the Chinuch of the mitzvah of Baltashchus not to waste anything. And the Chinuch says over there, I'm paraphrasing his words, you must see it inside. It's in Parashas Kiseitze. I think it's tough. Kuf Chof Tes. Righteous of the world, the Chesidim and Tzadikim of Klad the righteous of history, find it intolerable to waste anything. Nothing is allowed to be wasted. Because everything is here in the physical universe as a medium of providing resources for me to connect to the source of it all, the Rebbeinu Shalom, the Creator. And the Torah Jew, the Yeshiva man, should, has to learn Nach. But if the emphasis is there before he comes to the perspective of seeing the world and everything through the eyes of Chazal, it's going to lead to distortions. At the inception of the state, there were many talented Jews that came from around the world. There were two great Yiddish comedians that wanted to come and do their act here. The first prime minister didn't allow them to do their act in Yiddish. The liberal, democratic, new state wouldn't allow Yiddish performances. Secular, it can't be listened to in an unexpurgated version. But there's genius there as well. Don't waste anything. But it has to be filtered. In a very real sense, when we look at the psukim in this coming week's Pausha, the Sula Mutzav Alza, that ladder anchored in the ground, embedded in the ground. Roshima Gia Shamaima. The Malochim are going up and down. Connecting the concrete, the physical, with the spiritual. There was a time when Osamer had an Israeli department. We gave seminars for army intelligence officers. We had an Israeli program. That program, some years back, was separated and continued in an independent way, as did some other language 
non-English language programs. During those years, a group of army intelligence, I lectured to them, and I began positing the following question. This was 35 years ago. What would be if tomorrow the United States would be willing to give the state of Montana to the Jews that are coming back to Israel. Magnificent scenery. Beautiful. The United States would then extricate itself from any kind of friction those years. Even the Republicans had a problem with Israel. Unabashedly. And the United States would contribute fabulous sums of money. We wouldn't have to be fighting wars of attrition, constantly defending ourselves lives, energy, imagination, creativity, so much devoted to just surviving here, surrounded by so many enemies. The Arab world would contribute to it, state of Montana. It's win-win. Who loses? And they would try some weak rebuttal. If you're working from a premise that there is be'etzem, essentially, a kedusha, a sanctity, there's a spiritual reality of the relationship, the shidduch between Am Yisrael and Eretz Yisrael, this space. Does that mean at any time we should go after it at any cost? Not necessarily. But it can mean and Gedele Teira, immersed in Chazal, have guided us that once we're here, this habitation, we have to improve it and work to maximize the Torah perspective to become the norm. How do we do that? Learning, teaching, sharing. It's interesting. Rev. Henkin, just as he critiqued the secular vision, devoid, that if you learn Nach without Chazal, you get an image of the warrior Jew, the king who's out to conquer. It's a different, it's a superficial, distorted perception, but it's inescapable if you read without the eyes of Chazal. Vankin also points out that's why when we read Nach, we read Aftera, 
We read it with a nigan. We read it with a melody. To understand it is something from a different world view. It's not the simple read that it seems. Today, those two need to be censored Yiddish comedians. One of them was a friend, childhood friend of Begin. He was dying in the hospital when Begin was on his way to Camp David. Begin stopped to see him. Body was wasted, but the mind was still very sharp. He pulled himself up in the bed and he said to Begin in Yiddish, before you go to Camp David, sign over Yerushalayim on your wife's name. That way it doesn't belong to you, you can't give it away. At the inception, the early years, the arrogance, the overconfident position, look where we are today. I have no pretension to knowing what the right policy is. I just know who doesn't know. And I also know who is more likely to know. The Malbim says that Vayavosa, that Yaakov, is, he remained alone. The essential Yaakov remained there. As, as if he was devoid of physicality. The core sense of his mission. Ghazal teaches, Gemon Chulin, he went back for seemingly inexpensive, non precious vessels. Why? How the diuk is? Fascinating discussions. Rashi brings that Yaakov had just given Misa before he is sending his gifts of appeasement to, to Esav. He's performing like a ghetto Jew. Appeasement. Is he ready for war? If there's no choice. He's davening because he knows it's all in the hands of the Rebani Shlom, but he has to do his shtadlis. Before he sends the gifts, he takes Misa. Moshe Chochma says, there's a, there's a message in the smichas, in the contiguity here. There are people, when they're successful, they're very, very affluent. They have no problem. Throw money here, throw money there rather cavalier about 
the whole enterprise of giving and sharing. An ego expression, an extension of me, of meanness. But if somebody goes after pachim ktanim, if somebody is very, very careful not to leave over anything, not to waste anything, he's not cavalier about the maisa that he just gave. He wasn't casual about spendthrift. He's calculating. He's making a cheshvah. There'll always be a difference, says the Meshe Chochmah, between that which we do cerebrally and that which we do emotionally. The real genius of the Jew in history has been the chibur, the connection of the cerebral with the emotional. Avas Hashem, I can come to it through Limina I should come to it through Limina It's the only way to come to it. But I can amplify that through the study of the Bria. Study of the Bria, biology, physics, chemistry. <laughs> How come we see so few physicists, chemists, and biologists that have come to it? Because they, they began with anochiyut, me. And then God didn't get beyond that. They didn't want to get beyond that because there's too much at stake. Someone who's immersed in Limon Atera can utilize the Bria, history, see the Hashgocha. There's nothing wasted, nothing has been wasted in history. And like the Chinuch says, Yaakov is reluctant to waste anything. He uses the term, the Chinuch, a tzaddik doesn't want to waste a mustard seed, a galgir of hadal. So surely we don't want to waste any kind of talent, any kind of beauty, any kind of energy. Brother of the Maral, Sefer Chaim. It's also, we've touched on it here in the many many months ago. Brother of the Maral learned the Chavrusa with the Ramor. Moor was very unhappy when he was leaving. He placated him. He points out the brother of the Maral and it's fascinating, again, that the most svarim, we have some svarim of his, indicate that he was the brother of the Maral. There are Adam that say he had Gilu Yelio. He learned Bechavrusu de Ramo. And he goes through history being identified as the brother of the Maral. That's not a small schus, but the Chura, he had his own bank account. He 
He sequestered himself during a plague. He was forcibly sequestered. And then he took to writing the Sefer Echayim. and other works in Agoda. He said the reason he's doing that, he saw terrible, terrible tragedies around him in the family and in the community during the Magefa, during the plague. And he writes, Agoda is the same oasis as Daiga, worry. The tikkun for daiga is agoda. But to get a handle on agoda, we need, again, shoshenogor hasapora. He writes there, that I believe the Maral also talks about this, that when the Anche Knesses Hagdela, the men of the Great Assembly, petitioned the Rebanish Lalam to Remove the Yetzirah, the passion, the id, the sense of urgency, as if it was hormonal for Avedah Zorah that once existed. Can't be handled. The eventually acquiesced. That's the time Nevoah. no longer is revealed to Klai Yisrael. The Ramban teaches that we have a connection and a taste of Nevoah every time we open up a Gemara, every time we open up a Chumash, a Mishnah, because it's all there. And our access to it, our way, our gate of entry is through Chazal. We are retasting it, but it's not Nevoa as such. Coming to Hanukkah soon, that was the last of what was given over to Ksav to be written. Excuse me. We're coming to, there was no Purim was the last that was been, and Hanukkah is without Aksav. And so, says the brother of the Maral that. Where did it go, that Yetzirah, for Avodah Zorah? He seems to be positing that once something is in the Bria, it doesn't go away. Once something, the Rebbe Shem creates something, it's here. As some of us have talked about it problem with recycling, nuclear waste. <clears throat> it's here. There's certain things you can't get rid of. You can reinvent it, manipulate it. But you can't make it go away. Just like the Psadye Gon uses the lotion or may simcha quotes in Parshas Metzera, just as the Rebani Shalom is the only one who can make something from nothing, also the Rebani Shalom is the only one who can make nothing from something. Man can change his state. 
we can go from, li- from solid to liquid, liquid to gas, and back around again, it doesn't go away. And so, he asked, where did the Yetzirah for money go? Excuse me. Where did the Yetzirah for Avodah go went to money? Yetzirah for money doesn't mean that you should reject what can be done with money. We all know. But there's a certain passion for relating to money as an end in itself. That Brother of the Moral quotes the Daushan Ibn Shuab, who says, most people don't have their money, their money has them. The money owns them. But it's a resource. Fabulous resource. Imagine if all the Jewish money that has been given to secular Jewish causes, to non-Jewish causes, today to opera, to museums, had been given to tell It's hard to think what the world would look like. I sat one time in South Africa in Johannesburg over 30 years ago also with two very, very wonderful philanthropists, traditional South African Jews, very proud of being Jewish, but very, very remedial level in their learning and in their, their observance. One of them asked me if I would be interested in a job working in his corporation. And the other fellow says, nah, don't take him. He doesn't like money enough. And the other guy said, yeah, but that's what he's here for. <laughs> he said, yeah, but he doesn't like money enough. My father, Zechena Ravrocha, would have a certain success over the years, traveling around the last 48 years. Fair amount of traveling. And while he was still alive, Zechena Ravrocha used to call him to share something, not from a cell phone, from an airport phone, trying to beat the quarters before they fall, before they even had cards to stick in. And his uh, diagnosis, which was a prognosis as well, was you have just enough Hatzlocha to get into more trouble. He was right. So we are battling a magaifa. We're battling anti-Semitism. The powers that be didn't take Montana. And I'm glad. But it's made life a lot more complicated. And if you hear the nigan, you hear the trop, 
You hear the melody in the Posak, you understand that we're revisiting again and again through history. There are those Mephoshim that learn that the game plan for sending one flock, separating it, leave a revach, leave space, being Eider la Eider, that's anticipating that the Rebbe will give us room to breathe in our galut confrontations with Esau. We have a space to regroup, to come together again. The Chur, that's, that's the simple pshat in the Posek and Eicha. Chadoshim labkorim Rabba Munasecha, the Rebbe Nishlam gives us a, it's talking about Chazal say, Boko and Shomachus, the flash of different nations as they streak across history. The Assyrians, the Babylonians. Where are they today? And the little ghetto Jew is still here. Rabbi Yaakov Emden talks about it in his Siddha that his das, his understanding is that the ness of Jewish survival since Choven Bayer Sheni till his day till his day let alone till today is a bigger ness than the ness of Yetzirah Mitzrayim. The energy, the power to be able to be inclusive, to incorporate to embrace every mustard seed, every molecule of creation. Yes, that's part of what we can and should do. The Aveo Alabrius to bring others the world to a recognition of Avas Hashem, the Rambam says, is an integral part of my mitzvah of Avas Hashem. He brings it in the mitzvah of Avas Hashem is to bring others to an awareness. Why? Because if you really love the Rebani Shlalem, it's intolerable to you that others should not share that. You can't waste any human potential. Again, the Chura, it lines up with the with the Chinuch. A global plague resurfacing of the virus of anti-Semitism Many years ago, we and others pointed it out. Whenever you see distortions, misrepresentations about the Torah world in the secular media, you know you're soon going to see more anti-Semitism in the world. Mida connected mida.
my brother was fond of saying, still says, media can get media. <laughs> but what makes it cause for optimism is that partitions, masks, confusion, but a few meters from here, there's a new base medrash. Hopefully there'll be a vaccine soon. We won't have all of the difficult kinds of restrictions and limitations. So Hever learn the tasis well. Learn the mashor on the tasis to make sure you understood the tasis. Learn the tasis to make sure you understood the Rashi and learn the Rashi to make sure you understood the Gemara and learn the mashor to make sure you understood the tasis. because we're going to be hard-pressed soon for more people to share the Aveo Alabrius. Yeah, we're staying behind for Pachem Ketanim to collect all of the pots and pans to know the difference What's kosher? What's not kosher? What's a kli? What's makabal tumor? What's not makabal tumor? Yeah. We're staying behind to collect them. And that's what will give us the credibility, the energy, the key, the code to connect to that sulam mutz of altza. Roshem agir shemayama. Shem yitain that we should see Yeshua's or Rafuas for all of Klal Yisrael. And as Reb Meshe Shapiro Zatzal, many years, taught No Sameach, told our Talmidim, when Mashiach comes, you fellas are going to be up front online. Hashem Yitain, we should see it soon. Amen.